All right, this is Bill from Lilac Writer, and today I'm going to go over even more new features of Studio One version 1.5. And in, if you looked at the first two videos that I did, and you have, think you now have a pretty good idea of what's new, uh, you don't because I've just really barely touched the surface. Um, the first thing is the constrained drag, which is a really um, nice feature. If I drag something now, it will stay in alignment um, as I drag it, as you just see. I can even do that on a uh, range. So if I use the range tool and just select a range, and then pull that to a new track, it'll stay in time sync with the original source, which is great. However, if you want to override that, the shift key will override that. And then the next thing is the cursor positioning. Um, as I showed before, you can position the cursor by clicking in the background. If you have the range tool on, you can also use this to click um, pretty much anywhere. There's a little bit of a lag when you do it while you're selecting a clip, but um, I think that's an interesting behavior. I'm not sure how important that is. This one I think is important. If you are zooming in and looking around and you're going like, really, I want to do something in this area, but I want to bring the cursor over here. Uh, with just the mouse pointer hovering, command space, that would be control space on a PC. It will bring the cursor right to you. So anywhere you go on here, um, anywhere you want to point, you can bring the cursor right there. This is a great feature. And if you use this in conjunction with the new split at cursor uh, feature, so I point here, hit command space, and then option X, I can put a cut right there. That's a little more like a workflow that some other systems have, gives you an alternative to selecting uh, from the tools to do that. Also, I keep finding new uses for the remapping um, I remapped the home key. One thing about the keyboard remapping is that whatever you've just done will be highlighted when you go into the feature. So this is how I uh, remapped home. I, I wanted it to be basically returned to zero, which is by default the comma key. I hit the comma and now go into the keyboard shortcuts. You'll see that that is um, pre-selected in here. And then I've also added the home key to that, which I, I really kind of like. So I can just hit the home key on the extended keyboard if I want to, um, you know, quickly return to zero. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show is the loop range setting. I'll just show you how this works. Normally with the range, you have a few ways to set it uh, and you have in the past. Say you highlighted um, a region like this and hit P, it sets the loop to match the loop point to match. So then if you play back and you have it in loop, it'll loop around, which is great. But um, if you wanted to um, extend this here before you could drag this, but now you can also hold down um, option or alt, option on the Mac, and click and extend it to the right. Or you can shorten it that way. So you set the right side of it with the option key and you set the left side of it with the command key so you hold down command and click in the timeline and you can now set that and I think this is a uh, really uh, very handy for controlling this loop setting now if you're on the Mac and you're using your left hand or the keys to the left of the spacebar they're reversed of how you would think because I mean just take a look at the keyboard so that makes a little more sense in the PC. But the way around this on the Mac is just go to the other side of the spacebar. Use the command and option keys to the right side of the spacebar, and then it completely makes sense. So now I think of, since I don't normally use those keys for much of anything, now I use them for this, um, you know, extending the loop selection. All right, there is a new turbo drag. This is useful if you're if you wanted to, say, move something way way to the end of the project and you're like oh, okay I'm gonna take this uh, you know this MIDI clip here and uh, I want to put it at the end of the song now okay now so you're dragging and dragging waiting well the spacebar will really speed that up now now I'm going to revisit the support for Rex files 
um, we'll open the browser. I have a, a folder into my Rex uh, file library. So if you have Rex files, you can now access them like any other loop. And I covered that last time. So I can preview them um, at the project tempo and you can drag them into your project. They work pretty much like any other loops. Now you can also access the individual slices. A Rex file is made up of all the individual slices of, you know, of the material that's in there. So and so you could find something within a loop that you like, like maybe the kick, and then drag just the individual kick into your project. And now that's ready to uh, duplicate and, you know, drag around and do whatever you'd like to remix that in your project. Very handy. But take a look at this. If I right click right on the main Rex file, I can send it to a new sample one. Sample one is the built in sampler instrument. So let's do, let's do that. And in that operation, you can see it's importing it. Uh, it's created an instrument track. And now here's a sample one with all of those slices mapped um, onto the keyboard. And in addition to that, we've got um, a MIDI file that's got all of those slices mapped uh, basically um, you know, across the spectrum. Very, uh, this is familiar if you've worked with Rex files before, but now you can take these individual, um, you can take these individual MIDI notes and rearrange these. So I'm not going to get into that this time, but it's a great new feature. And you've also got the ability to manipulate all of these different slices in sample one using the tools, the, the filtering and uh, pitch modulation and things like that to really create some interesting uh, effects. All right, so that's some uh, cool new stuff with Rex. And while we're on sample one, I'm going to just cr quickly create a new sample one track. And you can now drag things from your own project. So if you wanted to take an individual part here, let's, let's say we wanted to take this little section. I'm going to use the range tool here. Just take this, and I can just drag this right into a sample one instrument. And now this is mapped on my keyboard. All right, now here's another interesting thing we can do with MIDI that's another new feature. If I right click on this and look at part functions, I can now explode pitches to tracks. So let's just do that to see what happens. This is a drum part from Superior Drummer. Sounds the same, but now each note that's in use is now on a separate track. So let's um, loop this right here and see what's what here. All right, so this track now contains the MIDI notes of only the kick part. Now if I combine that with another feature which is bounce to bounce instrument parts, I just select that part, it'll bounce it down, and now I've created an audio track of just that part of my drum part. Let's hear that. I mean, that's just an incredible capability to take um, a little piece of a MIDI track, break out the part, and now all of a sudden, I now have an audio file of that uh, kick drum part. Just very, very useful, very flexible. And now I can just uh, quickly, you know, undo all of that stuff. All right, so that's a review of uh, a bunch more new features in Studio One 1.5, and we'll talk to you again very soon.